Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome President of United Airlines, Scott Kirby. Thank you, thank you. Uh, welcome to Chicago. We've got some great weather for you. It's not like this all the time uh, when we're here in Chicago, but uh, welcome. I got a great cheering section up here. Yay, United! <laughs> uh, look, uh, thank you all for being here and coming to GBTA. We appreciate the opportunity to be one of the title sponsors for the event, and I appreciate the opportunity to come and talk to you uh, during your lunchtime today uh, to talk about some of the great things that are happening at United Airlines on our mission and our goal to build the best airline in the world, uh, which we are confident we're going to ultimately be able to do. Uh, this is a great opportunity, though, while we want to build an airline that it, people choose to fly for all of our customers, um, leisure customers and business customers, we know that the people that you represent uh, really are our bread and butter. And what makes United tick, what makes it possible for us to fly around the world, to offer great services to all of our customers, uh, are our business travelers and the road warriors who fly us all the time. By virtue of the fact that we are in the seven hubs where we are, uh, they are seven of the largest business travel markets in the world. Uh, in fact, 85% of the people that fly international premium class to the United States are going to one of United's seven hubs. And because of that, business travel is incredibly important to us just based on geography and who we are. So this is a great opportunity to come not only talk to you, but to hear from our very best customers, our most important customers, and the customers that pay the bill. Uh, and we hope to learn as much from this event, and we always do, uh, as we impart while we're here. I want to spend some time talking about the future at United, but before I do, it's helpful to me at least to rewind to the past few years that got United to the point where we are today, which really is a launching pad for the future. Uh, and I'm going to do a very quick summary of something that I do often with our employees. We actually have an event that we call Backstage, where all 25,000 flight attendants from around the world at United Airlines are coming here to Chicago. We have a huge facility, kind of like this, uh, where we have a great event, two-day event for them. It's not training. It's all about customer service and how do we really change how people feel about flying United Airlines. And when I do that, I use the following story, although it takes a lot longer. Uh, I think of the modern history of United Airlines as really beginning in 2016 when Oscar Munoz became CEO of United. And he wasn't an airline guy, but he quickly came in and said, this is a customer service business. We say we are about uniting people and connecting the world, and we aren't even united internally within United Airlines. Our employees don't feel like they're on the same team. And it's hard to deliver good customer service if you don't think the company has your back and is on the same side. So he said about making it his mission to have the 95,000 people of United Airlines working together and rowing in the same direction, rebuilding trust with the front line after all the bad stuff that's happened to airlines over the past two decades, uh, and did an incredible job of that. And I think of that as the foundation of a pyramid that everything else that we're going to build at United is built on top of, because you can't build a customer service business if you don't have the employees with you and you don't having them believing in the company and believing in the mission of providing great customer service. In 2017, we built on that foundation by trying to run a great operation. For many years at United Airlines, we would tell ourselves that we can't be in the top tier of air airlines in terms of operating metrics, on time, cancellation rates, mishandled baggage, all the other metrics, because we operated hubs in three of the five toughest airports in the entire world, Newark, Chicago, and San Francisco. Really crowded airports with lots of weather. But as you know, our customers don't care about that. They just care about get me there on time with my bags with a minimum amount of hassle. And so we made it our mission in 2017 to run a great operation. And I won't bore you with tons of statistics, but a couple that I think are relevant. We became number one in departure performance um, in the country after years of being uh, at the bottom. We had an 83% reduction over a couple of years in our maintenance delays and cancellations. Just some incredible performance from the operating team to run a, a great operation, even in really tough environment, even in a difficult environment in the hubs that we were in. And by the way, one of the new things that we've started as we look forward, which will be great for all of your customers, um, is how can we operate even when there's inclement weather? You know, we 
storms are getting worse. Global warming, there's more storms every day, every year, um, and that's probably going to continue. Instead of accepting that when the ramp is closed, we just have to shut down operations until the lightning passes and we can move on, what kind of investments can we make in technology that allow us to keep running at least a partial operation? So we started a, in 2017 with focus on reliability and operation, but we're going to take it to try to take it to the next level um, and do things that no airline in the world is doing. And as United Airlines, as one of the largest airlines in the world, and particularly an airline that operates in tough conditions, we're in a prime position to develop new technology uh, to do exactly that. Those two foundational elements allowed us in 2018 to build on the next level of the pyramid, which was getting back to growing United. I know many of you in this room have been around the travel industry for a long time, and if you're like others, I've heard it my entire career, even when I wasn't at United. Everyone talked about the potential of United Airlines and the hub, the incredible hubs that United had with the great opportunity and somehow never seemed to realize that opportunity. We needed to get back to growing. United kind of was the one airline in the U.S. in particular in the last seven, eight years or between 2010 and 16 that wasn't growing, that was shrinking and seeding market share. And that was bad for everyone. That's obviously bad for our customers because we have fewer flights, fewer destinations for them to go to. It's bad for our employees who are just, their careers stagnate. They can't move up. They can't move from the right seat to the left seat. And it turned out it was bad for our investors. When we announced a growth plan at the beginning of 2018, if any of you follow the stock market or follow airline stocks, we got an awful, awful lot of criticism. Our stock was down 11, 12% the next day, and um, we just got screamed at by investors um, all around the country. Um, it didn't take very long, though, for the market to realize, hey, this makes sense for United. Um, it is one of those few situations where growth and something that people maybe have thought was bad was good for our customers, good for our employees, and it's been good for our shareholders. All of those foundational elements, those three bottom levels of the pyramid, allow us to look in 2019 and beyond to what we want to make United for the future. And we've made our focus and our mission changing the culture, changing the way people feel about flying United Airlines. We know that there's a lot of negative perceptions. It's not unique to United, particularly about legacy carriers, uh, but certainly about United as well. Um, and we've got to change. Um, the reason we have those backstage events, and we're spending tens of millions of dollars bringing all of our flight attendants in, and we're going to spend tens of millions of dollars to bring all of our customer-facing agents in both the call centers and the airports here to Chicago next year, um, is because we know we have to change. And getting the message through to them that we have to change how we interact with people. And really the mission is to have people fly us, not because we're the best nonstop in the market, not because we have the lowest fare, but because the customers that you represent are choosing to fly United and loving to fly United because they know it'll be a good customer experience, they know they can count on us, um, and they know that we'll do what it takes to take care of them. But we're not just focused on investing in our people to make that happen. That's a big part of it. But we're also leading the market in terms of product innovation for customers. Um, you see things like uh, the Polaris. We can't get it on the airplanes fast enough. Um, you know, the biggest complaint I hear about Polaris is we don't have it on every airplane yet. Huge investments in our lounges, huge investments in our corporate products to make your jobs easier, whether it's corporate preferreds, our new meetings product, uh, our Pass Plus product, you know, all kinds of investments there. Uh, the CRJ 500 will be the first airplane that is flying in 50 seat regional markets. It's going to be one of the most premium products out there uh, flying in small markets. The, the aircraft with 46 business class seats on 767s flying across the Atlantic to Heathrow and, and Switzerland. So huge investments that we are making and a lot more to come. Andrew Nisella um, won't let me tell you what some of the investments to come are. Uh, he cautioned me before we got on, but we have huge um, investments in, in additional products. Um, it goes beyond the products. It really is about people. We're in the business of connecting people and uniting the world. I talked about the things that we're doing with our employees to change it, but it even goes beyond that to the communities we serve. Um, in fact, uh, today, actually, after I'm on, uh, you're gonna, Scott is going to come back on and talk about a new GBTA Council for LGBTQ. Uh, that we're proud at United to be a sponsor of and be a participant uh, on the council uh, as it launches. But really, we are trying to change everything uh, about United um, and make this the best airline in the world. And I'm fond of ending a speech like this when I talk to our employees with saying, we have all the raw ingredients 
um, to be the best airline in the world. We have an incredible route network with incredible potential. We really do have incredible people with lots of history. Um, you know, my wife, my father-in-law worked for United for 42 years, and when my wife hears Rhapsody in Blue, she literally gets tears in her eyes. Um, she's so emotional about it. That is a passion that we, if we can connect with it, uh, can really turn into something great for our people, our employees. Uh, we also have the will and the means to invest in the future uh, and make this airline great. And we are confident that in the years to come, we know we aren't there yet, but in the years to come, we are going to not just make United the best airline in the world, but the best airline in the history of aviation. Thank you for your business. Thank you for your partnership.